I skipped all the I skipped all the holidays. I'm talking about I'm putting in the work eight hours a day studying for the GRE because guess what? It's a hard test. It's hard. So then I apply in January. So I'm like, you know, hey, I'm on top of the world, about to apply to this PhD program. Somebody about to let me in. January go, nothing. February come, nothing. And I'm like, man, you know, I'm going online. This is a website that you check. It's called Grad Cafe. And it's like um, people posting their acceptance decisions and say, oh, hey, I got an interview at this program and a lot of the programs that I interviewed with. And I'm like, man, so it kind of hurt my spirit, right? So here lately, I've been in a little funk and I'm like, man, you know what? I know what I need. I need to get in front of some athletes because I'm back at home. Football athletes is what I do. I, listen, I, this, is my, this is my space that I love to operate in. And with that being said, yeah, the grind is real. Because y'all know what time it is, man. Listen, a final's coming up here pretty soon, and somebody ain't been taking care of business. Mm -hmm. But guess what? That's why. I, that's why. The current situation is: all we gotta do is we gotta assess our current station and move forward and grind. The first P that I'm here to discuss with y'all is purpose. Purpose. And it couldn't have been a, a better day to discuss purpose because I woke up this morning emotional. Like, my heart was heavy this morning because I get on, uh, somebody called me on the phone and said, man, listen, Aaron Hernandez, he killed himself. And I'm like, man, you know, I've been there before. Because as a lot of y'all know this, but a lot of y'all don't, man, listen, I played college football. I did my thing. I did the 27 best linebacker in the country. I didn't take care of business, went JUCO. From JUCO, I went two years in prison, got out of prison. Then from there, I went back to UCF, and then from there, guess what? My second semester on campus, falsely accused of sexual battery. Walking around with two leg monitors on my leg, nine months. I just met up with my daddy on Saturday, and he just reminded me, listen, so hey, you can't give up because I dropped $18,000 of my own money on this lawyer, and I'm gonna need you to suck it up, and you keep going. So when I woke up this morning, I was like, man, Aaron Hernandez, he killed himself, but guess what? He, he didn't take care of business with his purpose because guess what? He was so focused on the what that he forgot the why. And the why is the most important thing that you got associated with your purpose because that why going to keep you going. Like with, these, with this PhD program, and I, if I were to say, hey, the only reason I'm doing it is because I want to get the letters behind my name, then I would have gave up. But no, guess what? I'm coming back with a vengeance. I'm coming back with a vengeance because they can't stop my grind. And that's what I'm here to tell you about your purpose. Your purpose is associated with your why for your life. And if you don't associate the purpose with the why and you, so, and you choose to focus on the what, man, guess what? The one, the one that's sitting in this room who's not taking care of business, over these next three weeks, you're going to give up. Because guess what? You can still get there. Like, you may not be able to get the 3.0 to all A's and the B's, but guess what? And you may be taking care of business. Your goal needs to be to remain eligible. Because I felt some type of way the last time I came to speak to the team when I talked to Jay Walk and he was like, man, yeah, you know, boy, like 30 boys on the team came back ineligible. And I'm like, man, I came to speak to the team. I pulled in the yard. What? That's how you're going to do me? So the first thing I need for y'all to do, I need y'all to focus on the why. Like, what's your purpose for being here? And what, it, what you associate your purpose with? Like, what is that? And somebody please tell me, like, why am I here? Like, what am I, what you doing this for? National championship. Love ball. You love ball, okay, right? That's on the team level, but now I'm asking you on the man level. Uh, really. All right. Get a good job. Okay. Like, now, guess what? Bam. That's exactly why I'm here. Guess what? I done did I did the, you know, I failed the football. That's so bad. So my plan A failed. My plan B, okay, guess what? I'm gonna go back to school. So I graduated first generation from UCF, did that, so then bam, here we go. Next step, go get the master's degree. Because guess what? You really can't do nothing with a psychology degree, but you need to go to grad school, right? Gotta go to grad school. So I did that, then I got the master's degree. You know, uh, and with the master, with the master's degree came paid internships. Getting paid 2250 an hour to move to Toledo, Ohio to go work for Chrysler. With that came flying around the country to go speak at, I mean, not doing that too, but flying around the country going interview for leadership programs at Fortune 200 companies, Fortune 50 companies. So I know when you talk about getting a good job, I can help you do that too. And that's why I'm here because I'm all about the we. Like, Leafus, where you at? He in here? Okay, bam. So there he go. He, I, he sent me the text over here. I got play of the game. All right, cool. What's your grades look like? Man, listen, I'm, str I'm struggling in child psychology. Oh, you struggling? All right, listen. Meet me in the library, and I need you to teach me what you learned. This was yesterday. I met him in the library yesterday. So for an hour and a half, I'm sitting there with him, listening to him teach, teach uh, tell me about uh, Eric Erickson and, and Charles and who, 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 come on, you know. 
Sigmund Freud, who else? Yeah. Talking about the, e the ego or the what? The super ego. Man, come on, man, listen. Hey, y'all is my why. Like, I care about y'all so much, and I see some of y'all around campus, and the ones that I do remember, I come, ask you every time I see you, what your grades look like. Man, come on, man. Like, it, it, the, the, your purpose is bigger than just you. So that's the first thing I need y'all to get. Purpose. Your purpose is bigger than you, man. Like, it just, it's bigger than you. And when you're thinking about giving up and you're thinking about accepting mediocrity for your life and not going to class and not finishing these three weeks strong, better think again. No choice. No choice. And then, with purpose, some, man, sometimes your purpose is associated with pain. I'm telling you, still, every day, man, I wake up, man, I'm going to tell you what sucks about the decisions that I made. It was self inflicted like, I did that to myself. Like, I, I'm a convicted felon, and, I, and I, I take that, and I got that pain on me every day. But and I did it to myself. So, and, like, that's one of the worst pains in the world because you can't correct that. So, but what I can do is use that same pain to keep and push me to move forward to make sure that although you might not make a, choice, a, a legal decision choice that gets you in trouble, but guess what? You may make the decision to not go to class one day and, and remain and get in eligible, and then you flunk out of school, and you got to go back to the hood of where you come from as opposed to, Standing here and receiving this good blessing you got in front of your in front of your face. Listen, everybody's not gonna make it to the NFL, but guess what? Every single one of y'all has the opportunity, and the opportunity is called it's called social mobility. 70% of all Americans, they don't make it to the next tax bracket because half of them don't go to college and they come there and they accept mediocrity and they don't get those good jobs that we're looking to get, like you just said. You know, like it, you don't find you don't find it funny, like the dude on uh it's a what it's a on the website, it's this guy on the front cover, the front screen, it's like Google employee, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, man, you know what? That's a cool story, so you can't make it out about Austin, because I know, because when I went to the UTC to go interview, and it was a group interview, and I'm asking everybody, like, what school you come from? They say, oh, I come from MIT. I come from uh, Harvard. I'm at Yale, Purdue. And I'm like, well, how did you find out about this opportunity? They was like, oh, they come to our school to recruit every week. You know, we got at least 10 to 15, Fortune 50, Fortune 500 companies coming to our school to recruit every week. Every week. I don't know if y'all been to the career fair here, but no, nah, that's not happening. You don't have no Fortune 200, Fortune 500 companies to recruit at Vada Austin State. So the only way that you make it out of here to be that diamond in the rope, you got to grind. <laughs> grind. Man. So, but check this out. When you go through pain, it was meant to be a short-term period of life. It's only, it's only a lesson. All pain that you experience, it's just a lesson. And what I need for y'all to do is if you're experiencing some type of pain right now that's preventing you from going to class or you're going through something, I'm going to need you to identify that lesson and that pain ASAP. Like, with the PhD program, like, I'm not even mad about that no more. Like, I don't care that I spent three months studying for eight hours a day, uh, not speaking, eating spaghetti every day for like three or four weeks because guess what? My pockets was getting low because I wasn't speaking and making no money. So, like, I'm not mad about that. And then when you apply, like, I didn't know that as a first generation student, like you should apply to something called a safe school, a school that you just know you're going to get in. I didn't know that. But guess what? Now I know moving forward. So that way, when, you, when one of y'all hit me up moving forward in the future, y'all say, hey, I want to get into a PhD program. Now I can tell you, hey, make sure you apply to a safe school. Because I didn't. I applied to all top programs, like Southern California, uh, Iowa, and like these. And for what I, you know, I'm doing organization behavior. So those top programs. So I need y'all to identify the lesson that's in your pain as soon as possible because it's, like I said, it's only temporary. You will get through. Like, you will get through. I promise you. Like, when I was in prison two years, you know the lesson I learned from that? Patience. You're going to get out because after the first year went by, guess what? Now you got to wait again. I'm, I'm taking that same lesson and apply it to the PhD program. Like, okay, man, it sucks. Now I got to wait a whole other year to get in, but guess what? Hey, you sat down for two years before. And this time you got your freedom. So man, you about to kill it. You about to kill the game because you told me no, so now I gotta come home. Like I, you told me no, I gotta come home. So the first one, what's your purpose? Number two, the pain. Identify the lesson in that pain. Number three, passion. Man. Man. Like you listen. Do not sacrifice what you want in the long term for what you want right now. Listen, at the end of the day, like my goal, I'm going to be the number one motivation speaker in the world. It's nobody out here bragging it like I'm bragging it, and I'm just getting started. But guess what? Life is real. Bills are real. So, these last few months, I've been working at Longhorn. You think I want to work at Longhorn? Probably not. 
No, definitely not, because I got a master's degree. Like, you know, friends in my program, they, they got jobs making six to $7,000, and I'm up here at the Longhorn making $12 an hour. But you know what? I got a vision, and I'm not going to sacrifice what I want in the long term to get what I can get right now, get some money, and go take some trips and take pictures for Instagram. No, that's not, that's not my purpose on this earth. So I said passion because guess what? Even though I don't want to be, I don't want to be in that situation, you can't, you cannot go to Longhorn on St. Augustine Road and ask any manager who the hardest work in you. Man, I'm telling you, listen. My pa your passion oozes through your action. Like, you can't tell me no. So even if you in the classroom, you really don't want to be there, hey, listen, passion needs to ooze through your action. Like, you should you should be on beast mode from the time. The semester starts to the time the semester ends. Because you can't just be beast mode on the football field. You can't just be beast mode in the waste room. You got to be beast mode in every aspect of your life. Like, and I don't play with that. Like, but I still look like a D1 linebacker. I'm still cop diesel. And I outlive every single person in this room. You want to know why? Because you can't outgrind me. The passion is real. It's a, I'm telling you, the passion is real. And I need y'all to make sure when you wake up in the morning, you get that. Like, you wake up in the morning, like, I'm passionate. Like, it's nothing you can't tell me that, guess what, I got breath, I got my freedom, and I'm grinding. And I'm waking up and I'm passionate about everything that I'm doing in my life. They can't stop me from getting to that PhD program because it's this amazing quote that said, true passion for anything good is God's proof to you. Sit beforehand that it's already yours. Mm. True passion for anything good is God's proof to you. Sit beforehand. That is already yours. You can't tell me that I'm not going to be the number one motivational speaker in the world. You can't tell me that I'm not going to be Dr. Norris in about four or five years. Or you just can't tell me that because guess what? It's something that I'm passionate about so that way I can get back in front of athletes and motivate you because if I can get the PhD and the master's, that means you can at least graduate undergrad with the 3.0. Because if I, because guess what? I'm a former student athlete. If I can do it, you can do it, right? I'm no different than you. We all got the same brain, but guess what? My grind might be a little bit different. But at the same time, I'm going to use that same grind and motivate you with it. Here we go. Bam. Linebacker. I need a linebacker. Where we at? How you, how you make your reads on a football field? Okay, through the guard triangle. Bam. D-line. D-line. I need D-line. Here we go. Where you line up in it? What, what, what technique you line up in it? The shade. The What's your assignment? Blow up the center every time. You ever get in trouble if you don't blow up the center? Yep. They, they own you. Own you. And that goes to everybody in this room. Whatever position you play, I feel like everybody got an assignment, right? Everybody got a role. Would you agree? Like, football is a game about schemes, filling your gaps, gap protection, not whiffing on blocks as a wide receiver. So check me out, right? So I feel like the great teams, at every position on the field, they have a selfless leader in that position because he put the team before he put himself. Because you may have a superstar who want to, who, who might want to jump out of his, he might want to jump out of his uh, gap to make a play, but then he gagged. The only responsibility you got on this team is to be a selfless leader for the, for your teammates, for the person that sit right next to you. And then guess what? You got to be coachable. Got to be coachable. Because your coach is going to put you in the right position to make the play. I promise you. They're going to put you in the right position to make the play every time. Guaranteed. Because if they want, they won't be our coaches. And I know sometimes, man, you know, it's hard. It's hard listening to somebody when you, you think they wrong. Or you, you, just, you just feel like you're sweet. So you just let it go in one of your out of Sometimes you want to back talk and just say, oh, no, I'm, no, I'm not going to receive that coach. Because I was in, in y'all same position. I did the same thing. So now, bam, so let me check this out. Check this out. Taking it a step further. Outside of the game of football, what's your responsibility as a man in life? Provide for, my family. Provide for your family. That's what I'm talking about. So guess what? Why is that not the same thing? It's, it's staying in your lane and fulfilling your assignment every day, every play. You say, what's the difference? What's the difference? Same thing, right? Yeah. So basically what I'm saying is the same lesson that you learn in the football field is you, you can apply to your life. So now let me ask you this. Take a step. Further, if you look back on your life, or over this last semester, over the last year of schooling started, have you been doing everything in your power to put your family in that position to get to that next tax bracket? Okay. 
So everybody can just say, like, yeah, everybody, like, I'm on beast mode. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I can't say that I've been on beast mode for the last three, four months because guess what? I've been down in the dumps. And I'm, I forgot about the position. But then guess what? Here I am. I'm back. Like this, I'm sorry, but this, like this for me, this is my drug. Like when I come, when I come in this thing, like I just want to keep going and going and going. And now I'm back. Because my position matters. Your position matters. And I need y'all to understand the, the importance of your position. Like you got to understand the importance of your position. And not only on the team, but as a man for your family. Because your family is a team. And at some point in time, you're going to have some kids, a wife, and you got to do everything in your power right now because this station, like this, this, we're talking about, we talking about upward mobility. This is where you're doing it. Like, this is it. Like, everybody not built for the entrepreneurship. Everybody not going to be a CEO of a company. But you can't get to that level by taking care of business in this four years to get the 100K, a, a, a thousand, $100,000 a year job. Now, you can do that. But you got to be focused on your position every day. Like, we, listen, we're not taking no days off. No days off. So, I'm going to leave y'all with this story. Here we go. Bam. So, it's time to execute under pressure. Because there's somebody in this room who really got some work to do. And it's going to take y'all pointing to each other, keeping each other motivated, pushing each other, cutting into each other. Because, listen, everybody want to be a diamond. But a lot of people don't want to get cut. But if you're my friend, yeah, I'm a coin to you. My homeboy TK in the back, he called me like two days ago, maybe three days ago. He was like, man, listen, I need you to get this thing going. He's like, you've been slacking. Like, this time last year when you had this thing going, you were speaking everywhere. And now, it's, where you at? And I'm like, man, you're right. He was like, you just get out the pity party. Like, it's time for it. So, bam, here we go. Greatest sports comeback in history. I'm a, ooh, ooh. LeBron fan, that's my guy. So, listen, I'm not a basketball guy, but hey, you see what I'm saying? Like, y'all got the picture though, right? <laughs> listen, Cleveland Cavaliers down 3 1, and they like, man, how they gonna come back from this deficit? Like, no team ever in NBA history has came back down 3 1. Ever. Like, okay, so they go 3 1. 3-2. From 3-2 to 3-3. From 3-3, they're like, oh my gosh, hold up. Something ain't right. And I don't know what point of the game, y'all, who watched the game? Okay, so I don't know at what point in the game that y'all thought it was over, but listen, when I saw LeBron uh, run down Iguodala, he, I'm like, okay, it's over with. So then, bam, fast forward to the, the uh, post-game interview. LeBron said, he was like, I don't know. He was like, I don't know why we had to take the hard road, but this one is special. Like, I don't know why we had to go down the hard road. And I don't know why sometimes in life you, you make the, a, a bad decision to go, down that, to go down that path that's less traveled. But I wouldn't listen. I'm t if I, thought, I was thinking about this earlier. And you know what? If I had to go back and redo anything in my life, I probably wouldn't do it. Like, you st I still go to prison. Still do that. Still go through everything I've been through. And it sounds crazy, but guess what? Like, it was necessary because I'm in front of y'all. And I don't know who needs to hear something that I'm saying to just get you that energy and that verb and that vigor to, to recharge your life. But I, you know, I take that because I'm, built, because I'm built from something that's bigger than me. I got a purpose. You. I'm serious. Do we got any Drake fans in here? Drake fans. Drake. What's Drake? That's on. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. But what's his? That's on.
Let's call Say what's real. But check this out. That's what we're doing right now. We transition from fit to standing out. But that grind is hard. Like I'm telling you, it's hard. Like it's hard. <coughs> when you want to really change the condition of your life, change the condition of the team, I want to be naturally changed. But that, that grind is not going to be easy. Like it's going to come with a lot of sacrifice. It's going to take a lot of discipline, a lot of teamwork, a lot of camaraderie, and it's a lot, a lot of accountability for us pouring into each other every day because this grind is not easy. If it was cut off, everybody would everybody do it, but it's not like that. So what I'm, tell, what I'm challenging y'all to do is one, look at the purpose, the pain, the passion, and the position as the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. Because guess what? At the end, at the end of every game, when that, when that clock strikes zero, 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 we need to be in a winning position. And the only way you get to that position, remember the purpose, remember the pain that we're going through as we're transitioning from fitting in to standing out. Then moving forth from there, y'all keep that passion. Because I'm telling you, it's going to get hard. It's going to get hard. You got to keep the passion. You got to keep grinding. You got to keep grinding. You got to keep going. You got to keep going. And then we think about stopping. You got to keep going again because it's necessary for you to, ch to change the condition of your life. I'm serious. And then, guess what? At the end of the fourth quarter, and then when it's time to win the game, we're in a position to win. Not only on the football field, but guess what? After y'all graduate and y'all walking across that stage and, and they, about to put, they about to put your cap and gown on, you're going to flash back and be like, man, these last four years went by quick. And I want y'all to really be asking this question. Was your grind serious and was your grind real? And did your grind, the work that you put in, get you to that level and get you to that position that you wanted to be at for your family? That's my time for this.